Update 6.2 is just around the corner for Battlefield 5. Yesterday, community manager Adam Freeman announced that later this week, the team would be releasing a breakdown of the patch with lots more details and information about what we can expect, but at the same time, he chose to highlight three different elements of Update 6.2 that players can really expect to be the main points of this update. We have the weapon balance, which we already knew about, tank customization, which we knew was coming, but we didn't know was going to be part of update 6.2, and then audio improvements as well. With the weapon balance, first of all, this is the thing that I think we're all ready for. Over two months have passed now since DICE decided to completely change the weapon balance that Battlefield 5 was using over to something that virtually no one was asking for. DICE had their reasons for going ahead with the change regardless. They were trying to close up some of the engagement ranges and they were trying to rebalance the weapons into distinct range sections, but ultimately the update kind of failed. One of the goals of the update was to increase weapon variety and make more weapons more attractive to use, and the other was not to increase the amount of time it took to kill somebody at close to medium range and unfortunately neither of those objectives were met and we were left with this really squidgy, fluffy weapon balance position where high rate of fire weapons became even more popular as they were the ones capable of dealing damage fast enough to be somewhat equivalent to the balance that had just been replaced. DICE ended up pushing out a hotfix later in the month and that sort of struck a middle ground with the balance. It improved some of the issues that the new system had but Ultimately, the hotfix came with the message that further work would need to be done to change the weapon balance yet again, and that would be based on data within the game, with people playing with the weapon balance that people didn't really want, and community feedback at the same time. That further work will be delivered with update 6.2. This is where DICE has confirmed that they will be returning the weapon balance to a state that is much closer to where it was before they started this whole process, which, as I said before, does make me question why we needed to go round in this circle in the first place. This does mean we're not seeing a straight revert of the TTK or a revert of the weapon balance that certain members of the community have been asking for. Things will be slightly different here, and that's why I will be reserving my judgement on this new weapon balance position until it launches because I want to get some hands-on time with it. Of course I'll talk to you about it in the patch notes, we're probably going to find out what's going to be happening to the assault rifles, the machine guns, the SMGs, all the different categories, but my opinion on all of those changes will be reserved until the patch goes live because I want to get some time in the game using the weapons to really understand how this patch is going to lay out. Then there's this brand new feature that we've never heard about before that's coming with update 6.2. It's called tank customization. Of course, I'm completely kidding. This feature has been coming soon for over 15 months now after DICE promised to add it to the game after it launched. It featured in the reveal trailer and several other trailers after that point, but up until now, it's never been available for players to use. It seems that DICE is about to finally come good on their promise of adding it though, with it being included in the 6.2 update for the game. Adam Freeman shared a short clip recently of what kind of customization we can really expect to get with this new system, and you can see this Sherman from the end of the Solomon Islands trailer. It's got some wood panelling on the sides, it's got this American flag draped over the back of the hull, some spare tank tracks slung over the top. It looks really nice and it adds some flair to the tanks for sure. Now, the full extent of this customization system, whether we're looking at something truly modular, where you can put individual pieces onto it, mix and match different items to create a unique look, that kind of remains to be seen and because we've never really had any information, I kind of feel some people are going to get carried away here and think you're going to be able to place individual items onto your tank. If you look at the way the menu system is created in Battlefield 5 at the moment, there are no tools available for that kind of system to be in the game. So unless DICE has completely gone out of their way to create a really extravagant menu system to allow you to do that, I just don't see that being the case. I'm kind of thinking that we might get different looks for the top of the tank, maybe the sides of the tank, maybe the turret and things like that. 
I don't think it's going to be a truly modular system where I'm going to be able to put one piece of wood over here or I'm going to be able to move the flag a few inches further another way. I don't think it's really going to work like that. I think it's more going to be just bit by bit, but on a larger scale. But we'll have to wait and see because DICE hasn't told us anything so far. One thing I will say, and that I do hope happens with the tank customization system, is that DICE implements some more iconic looks to some of the tanks. I'd love to see a Fury tank in Battlefield 5. That would be really cool. Obviously, there's copyright things, and they might not really be able to do that. But something that stylistically looks like the tank from Fury, that would be really cool. And I think they've got the opportunity to do that by introducing this new tank customization system. Things are going to be a little bit more extravagant. And of course, I'm waiting to find out if this system will be a Boins only system or if we're going to be able to use our company coin for it. I hope we're able to use our company coin for it because right now we all have so much company coin and no one really knows what to do with it. And then thirdly, I mentioned audio improvements. You might remember that in the past, DICE did a big update on the audio systems within Battlefield 5. They virtually reworked the entire system to try and eliminate issues that players were experiencing. Sometimes certain sounds just weren't loud enough. Some of them were too loud. Some of them were not playing or just generally the sound didn't really feel as good as it had in previous games. Once that update had been applied, my personal experience was much, much better than what it was before, but DICE is going a step further here. In update 6.2, they're going to make further changes to the setup of audio to improve the overall output is probably the best way I can describe it. Recently, it was discovered that Battlefield 5 by default has limits to only output 20 different sounds at once which seems particularly low when you consider just how many sounds could be active at the same time quite close to you. Of course, you've got weapon firing sounds, you've got soldier voices, you've got vehicle sounds, ambient noise, footsteps. There's loads of sounds happening within Battlefield 5. Lots of action going on all the time, so only having 20 sounds play at once, then all mixed down together, that could lead to a lot of sounds being missed out. So... With update 6.2, DICE is going to try and work this issue away by implementing a new audio prioritization system that is going to help reduce occurrences of important sounds being missed due to performance limitations. DICE believes that this will create a more stable audio output where sounds like footsteps, vehicles and weapons, they won't be missed in the mix and much less important sounds will be deprioritized when there's lots of things happening at once. More weight is going to be added to audio sources that are considered close range, so that's things like weapon sounds and footsteps. The difference will be heard most in the stereo output mode, which is fairly flat in response, and there will also be a new option in the menu that will allow you to choose the kill notification sound. We spoke about this in a previous video. You'll have the default sound, which is the one that now sounds like Battlefield 1, the Battlefield 5 release sound, which is slightly different, or you can turn it off completely. Now, this is something that we're really going to have to wait and see how it turns out. Depending on your own audio preferences, that can already mean that the game sounds very different to you in comparison to someone else. And likely after the changes are applied with update 6.2, you are going to want to dive into the settings and do some tweaking if things sound a little bit different and you want to change that. Personally, I use the stereo settings because I found that having a flat response, that helps to keep the volume of less notable sounds like footsteps a little bit higher in the mix. Although, after 6.2, I might be able to play on surround sound or 3D headphones. Don't really know yet. As I said earlier, we will of course be getting full patch notes closer to the time of the update, but I wanted to cover off these three high level points now because they are basically the main features of update 6.2. Another change to the weapon balance means that finally, I hope we can be confident that DICE is happy with the way they've got these weapons set up and then we can settle into the system properly and figure out what guns work best for us. A tank customization system turning up extremely late is always better than it never turning up and hopefully some nice features for the body and the turrets to go along with the paint jobs that we've already got in the game and tweaks to the audio to clear up some of those irregularities. It does sound like a pretty good update to me but I'm going to wait for the patch notes to see the full extent of what DICE is doing here. 
And speaking about DICE, they're also updating Battlefront 2 this week, which I know is a completely different game, but it's one I always keep my eye on. There are four new weapons being added to that game, so all hands on deck at the DICE studio right now, it seems. So I'll probably do a video on those new weapons because they are the first new blasters that have been added to that game since 2017. So that's a long time to go without any new weapons. But thanks very much for watching. Leave me a rating and a comment. It is always appreciated. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.